Hey, what's up? It's Chris. Today, I'm gonna show you how to build this modern, sleek looking gaming desk. First, I'm going to rip down the desktop on the table saw. It's going to be 40 inches wide. This board is slightly warped, but we'll make the best of it. The wood I'm using for this is just simply a cabinet grade three quarter inch maple plywood. You can obviously, of course, make this desk just about any size you'll want. And later in the video, we'll talk about why you might want to do that from a design standpoint. The fence on my table saw has a tendency to travel at will, so I usually clamp it down. Here I'm ripping the width of the tabletop at 20 inches. In parts of this video, you'll notice a diagram in the upper right hand corner. The highlighted part indicates which part of the desk I am working on. One of the features of this desk is a little shelf below that's set up for about the size of a PS4 controller rack for charging. And so we're going to rip down that shelf so that the back piece of the shelf is 7 inches tall and the bottom portion of the shelf will be 7 and 7 eighths inches deep. Next we want to square off the end on the miter saw so we know that we have a square part and then we're going to measure at 7 and 7 eighths and that is to get the depth of the side parts of the shelf. The board is already 7 inches wide. These are the two end pieces of the shelf and I'm just going to scribe and mark them. I'm cutting the bottom part of the shelf at 1 foot and 11 and a half inches. When we put the pieces together uh, roughly it will look something like this. Now the end grain of our plywood is going to be exposed and just kind of setting it up the way on which sides I want the pieces exposed. Next we're going to make a really dangerous cut on the table saw where we're removing the guard and sticking a lot of the blade out. This is called a back cut or at least that's what I like to refer to it as. We're going to tilt the blade at about 5 to 15 degrees somewhere in there to get a really thin back cut. So we're basically just taking a wedge off. I have a jig that I've set up for this and I have another video on how to make that jig. Uh, but you can obviously make it any way you want. Now the reason that this cut is so dangerous is because I've got an old table saw that lacks just about every safety feature. And as you can see, there's about four and a half inches of the blade sticking out of the table, which is a lot of blade. So it's a cut to make very slow because there's a lot of surface area with the blade out that far. And so there's a lot of chance for it to bind, but it leaves a really thin cut wedge just sort of like this. If you don't feel comfortable making a cut like this, certainly uh, don't attempt it because you got to be careful of a lot of different things. You also want to be careful that you have nothing around the table saw that you can trip off because obviously if you trip and land on a blade, it's not going to be a pretty situation. But you can see I've got our piece of three quarter and when you back cut it like that, it just makes it look super thin. It's about an uh, eighth of an inch. I moved a little too fast through the end of the cut and got some tear out and then I had a little bit of binding here, but this should sand out pretty well. I sanded all the pieces down first with uh, 100 grit and then I moved to 150 and then 220. I decided to use Minwax Poly Acrylic Finish for this one, which is a water-based finish. I went with clear satin. For this project, I did things a lot differently than I normally do. On this one, I pre-finished everything before assembly. So usually I do it the other way, but decided to go this way this time. I sanded in between coats with a 400 grit sandpaper, and there's four coats on all pieces and then five coats on the top of the desk. After they're all finished, I'm just kind of putting together the and mocking up that lower shelf to kind of see what it will look like and feel like. I'm going to be assembling this desk with pocket hole screws. So now is a, the time to just take the time to see what wood grain you like best and which side you want facing outside. If there's any imperfections, you can kind of hide them in some of the joints if need be. Pretty much all I'm looking for is to put the prettiest facing face uh, outward where it's going to be most visible. Once we set the depth on the jig, we're ready to just start screwing all of our pocket holes. You really should use a sharp chisel for this, but I just used my pocket knife because I had it close and handy. And it worked okay. All we're really doing is cleaning up those edges so we don't have all that tear out in there. I also used wood glue on all the joints that I'm putting pocket screws in. 
After you lay down a bead of glue, you'll want to smooth it out with either a brush or your finger, and that's just to get good coverage across that whole surface. That way it's evenly distributed. Next, we're ready to line up and square up all of our edges and then start putting our pocket screws in. Now we are ready to center the shelf along the back edge. I'm just finding the center of the desktop and then I'm gonna find the center of the shelf and mark those center lines. With those center lines marked, we just need to line them up together and then we'll know exactly where center is. Once we've done that, we are ready to glue and screw this guy in. A simple little trick is to just use uh, painter's tape since I don't want to mark this desk since we've already finished it. And I'm just doing that so I have a reference point of where to put this desk that's a little bit easier to see when I'm messing with glue. That way I don't smear glue all over and have to move it. Now we are ready to carefully place the shelf on our marks, making sure to line everything up. Once it looks good, we're ready to go ahead and start screwing it in. Then we're going to go ahead and wipe out any glue squeeze out that we have. We're ready to place the back cut edge of our shelf. Now I'm taking time to make sure that these are all squared up. This one piece is a little bit off, but I think once we screw it in, we should line up just fine. A little trick for glue squeeze out, especially when you have just a small amount in there, is to take a sharp flathead screwdriver, wrap your rag over it, and then use that to wipe it out and just uh, readjust the cloth on the screwdriver with each swipe. And once you find the right angle, you should be able to get most of that out pretty easily. We're ready to remove our marking tape. I have a few bubbles in the finish here on this edge, so I'll have to come back and re-sand that out a little bit. Obviously, it'd be nice to keep all the pocket hole screws inside the shelf so they're kind of hidden from anywhere on the outside, but it, the problem is, since the shelf is so small, you can't really get in there with the drill to screw them in. And even if I had a slightly smaller bit, there's just not quite enough to get up there with the bit and the screw into a hole like that to get into the top. So it's close, but not quite, and so what I'm gonna do then is screw through the bottom right into the plywood. I'll probably pre-drill my holes just to make sure and maybe countersink the heads a little bit and then that will put us, that, that's how I'll attach this bottom part of the shelf. That, would, that will work because on the bottom it will be least, it's kind of like our next least visible option. I don't have any countersinking wood bits, so I'm just taking a regular drill bit and taking it nice and easy, trying to square it up and make just a deep enough hole to fit that screw head. We'll go ahead and sand down any of the blowout or tear out. And with that, we are ready to glue it and screw it. Again, wiping off any glue squeeze out. Next, we have the table legs. Now this is what makes this project pretty easy. Legs are can be complicated to build, especially to build in a sturdy way. So I just picked up a pair or a set of four hairpin legs off of Amazon. I believe these ones are 29 or 30 inches. I've been wanting to use hairpin style legs on a project and I finally got one. So I'm pretty excited to try these out for the first time. Kind of interested to see how they go. And this project just happened to be the right look and style for them. The legs also come with screws to fasten them, and then they also have these little rubber feet for the bottoms. Black seems to be the most popular color that these come in, but I'm sure you could maybe find some others, and if you can't, there's always the option to paint them. Next, we need to check to make sure that the screws won't go through the top of the table, so we're just measuring the depth of them. So we got three quarter inch material, well, these screws should be just safe. If they're not, basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna go shopping for different wood screws. We could 
flush it up with this edge. The problem is that is when you're looking down, you're gonna see this bracket a little bit. And this is really just an aesthetic thing. So if we bring it back, then when we look down, we won't see this black bracket and it will appear a little more hidden and it's just gonna look really clean. So we're gonna take a combination square and set it in about 5 sixteenths of an inch. This keeps this bracket when you're looking down from the desk from the top out of the kind of angle of sight. So it disappears and you won't see it. Each leg is fastened with five screws. When we get to the front edge, the leg placement is going to be a little bit different. I'm gonna pull it back from the front line of sight. So basically it appear, disappears with that back cut edge. Once we have attached the four legs, we are pretty much done here. The only thing left for me to do is give one final sand on the top and then a finish coat on the top of the desk. Now that we have finished up this desk, this project, let's talk about a few different design considerations. So this particular desk was designed for very specific uh, use for a very specific person. So one of my friends basically asked me to build this for him, commissioned me to build it. And so it's designed as a gaming desk, so he plays a lot. And so he wanted a good gaming desk for his room. And there's a, it's a very kind of particular tight spot and that's why it's kind of we measured it out, laid it out the way we did. A couple things you'll notice is the shelf down here is for uh, basically the size to fit a PS4 controller rack, that inside there, along with a couple other things. And then the other thing to think through is, so your knees come right about to here and then they hit. So this is really all the closer you're gonna get. So for him, he's a lean forward kind of guy when he games. So for him, he doesn't really care about getting under there. I'm more of a lean back with a taller chair. I like the head and neck support. So I would, if this were my desk, I would have brought it probably back another, I don't know, 10 inches or so, so I could rest my arms right there. It really depends kind of on, I guess, your preference as far as his knees hitting it was right about where he wanted to be. But if you're a lean back kind of person and you decide to build something like this, you might wanna go with a desk that's a little deeper. This guy is uh, 20 inches. Where this desk is going in his room though, you won't really, it's kind of in a, in a little nook, so you're really only gonna see it from the front. And the other thing is he's got a little bit of room on the side and in case he ever wanted to clamp like a mic stand or a monitor stand, we wanted to leave this inch this edge nice and fat so that he could, you know, bring one of those big C clamps on there, clamp it on, and then he could have a pole for hanging mics off or monitors or lights or whatever in case he ever starts live streaming. Cam, if you're listening to this, you should totally live stream. This back cut edge on the front, I really like because it makes it look really thin, especially when you get back further, it just makes this look so skinny. Kind of the idea was I wanted it to look just super clean and kind of modern-ish so it wasn't a big fat edge like you see from the side here. And I tried to do the same thing with our lower shelf down here. Um, obviously, all of this is an aesthetic option to be able to see the side grain of a plywood. The only thing we have to do is finish up on this is uh, put the desk in its place and then figure out where he wants the holes for the cords to go. So we'll drill one in the back here of the shelf so he can fit his controller charging rack right in there. And that is uh, pretty much it for this desk. So this is my first time using hairpin legs and it's kind of fun, I've been wanting project to use them on for a while now to just kind of test them out, see how they look. A couple of other ideas for you that you might want to add to your desk build would be something like uh, wireless charging. I thought about routing that out for the bottom or maybe even doing something a little fancy and putting a LED light strip underneath around the perimeter of it to just kind of give it a strange glow. You could also drill out a hole or cut out notches in the desk top to just bring different cords through. We decided not to do that on this one. You could of course delete the whole lower shelf if that fits you better. I'll have a downloadable SketchUp file on my website for this desk so you can download it, look at the plans and make your own modifications to it. If you build this desk or one like it, I would love to see it. Go ahead and post a photo to Instagram and tag me at mkreswick somewhere in the comments and take a look at what you built.